Welcome to the 55th International Film Festival of India. Today I have the pleasure and honor of welcoming the cast and crew of Australian movie The Rooster. As you all know, the country of focus <laughs> As you all know, the country of focus for the 55th FA is Australia and we have many amazing Australian movies screened here and one among them is The Rooster. Can we all have a clap? <laughs> So before we begin, I wish to let you all know that this press conference is being live streamed so that film lovers and our friends in the media can also view the proceedings remotely. And also please switch off your mobile phones or keep them in silence. So today we have the director and writer of the movie, Mark Leonard Winter. Lead actor, Hugo Weaving. Producers Geraldine Hickwell and Marvin Sharaki. Okay, so before we go with the questions, I'll just say the synopsis of the movie. So Dan, a young police. So we also have the trailer of the movie. Can we just play the trailer of the movie before we begin? Please switch off the lights. ask the cast and crew to give an opening remark. We'll start with the director and the writer of the movie. Also, this is your first feature film. You must be feeling great. Yeah, I, I, I am feeling uh, great and I'm feeling particularly great to be here and to be screening as part of IFKI. It's a great honor for us to be here. Um, this film was made sort of differently in Australia. Um, uh, my, my wife, Geraldine, she's my wife and, and we uh, made this at our home. Uh, so it's quite a small a small movie, not like The Matrix. Um, <laughs> and all these amazing people uh, came, uh, uh, Marvin and David, uh, who are here, came and this amazing <coughs> cast and crew came together to make this. So it was a real sort of labor of love. Um, we had breakfast and lunch every day in my garage. So it wasn't like a big Hollywood kind of production. Um, so it sort of feels extra special to be here now in Goa as part of the festival to, to share it with an Indian audience and to see if what the film is exploring and what the film is about resonates here with, with, uh, with um, you know, uh, what's happening here for people. And so it's just a real privilege and a pleasure to be here. So thank you for having us. So the actor, who actually don't need any introduction, uh, how, how was your experience of working in this movie? Uh, my experience of uh, working on the film was deeply um, enjoyable um, because I had worked with both Mark and Gary before. 
before as actors. And Mark and I have been in about four films together. Uh, and Jerry and I worked on stage together. So I knew them as friends and had read Mark's a number of drafts of the script, but was always engaged with the story and the character and was very excited about about the challenge that the um, character um, presented for me. Um, but I enjoyed playing him enormously, even though he's quite a damaged uh, human being. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. This movie must be special for you for obvious reasons. So would you like to share your experience? Yeah, I, it is very special for obvious reasons, but um, I'm just so uh, proud of Mark's work on the script and uh, so excited to see him evolve um, from acting to creating his own work on screen. Um, I always knew that he'd be really good at it and he far exceeded my expectations and that was a really special thing to witness, you know, being a part of the filmmaking process was amazing and I learned so much and Mark and I say it felt like we put ourselves through film school making this film. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, seeing what he managed to create um, and watching it again last night after some time has passed uh, was really moving and um, I'm so proud of him. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for having us here. So exciting to be in Goa and everyone's so wonderful. Uh, it was unreal uh, showing the film in a really high quality cinema, I have to say. So we've seen the film a hundred of times. Then we thought maybe we just stay out and come back, but we just couldn't help ourselves. It was just beautiful. But going back to the project, I think it started, of course, like every other film from the script and Mark's word on the page were just so beautiful. The picture he painted of the landscape, which everyone who seen the film um, can confess it, its own character, and the dialogue that comes so naturally. Often people after watching the film, they think, has there been some improv? No, they were all written words because it's so natural and people who come to us and they say, I know people who talk that way and I think, that is a huge compliment you can give. Dialogue is always the hardest thing. And I think it's just the performances are speaking for themselves. And it's amazing as a first time director debut film, the way that Mark carried on. And I'm so proud to say that the films had nominations and awards in all the categories for set, costume. We won award for um, music, Mark for a debut film. Lovely Hugo Weaving here, so I can go on and on and brag, but I will spare you the time. But it's just been an honor, so it was just a no-brainer, of course. Welcome back, Michelle. Uh, so we'll open the floor to questions. Someone want to ask questions? Okay. Can I help them? Hi, many congratulations to the entire team. Such a privilege to have all of you here. So my question is about the sound used in the movie. So I noticed in the trailer that the kind of sounds you've used, uh, along with the music of course, they are uh, they're, they're in contrast to each other. So there's a particular music that plays which is in tune to the table tennis ball sort of ricocheting off the board. And then there's music, but there's also the screams, very guttural screams that come from the lead actor. And uh, so what is the process or what is the thought behind having such a, a sound and musical experience sort of integrated? And how, what would you, what kind of audience reaction do you have in mind when you're designing the sound for such a film? Great question. Yeah, great question. Yeah. I won't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the composer, his name is Stephen Gregory. Uh, and he's a, a very brilliant composer in Australia. He's done a lot of theatre that I've worked with him on for a while. And we ended up landing on the idea of um, just using uh, voice for the score. 
so there's no instruments uh, aside from the music that is played you know diegetically in it like the jazz and stuff like that but in terms of music we composed for the film it was all done by the human voice uh, and it that idea was sort of born from this poem that Dan the main character in the in the film uh, reads at the end which is a, a poem about this feeling that God has abandoned you and the way he the way the character in the poem experiences this is that there's a procession going by of these exquisite voices and in the poem the idea is, is that is the feeling that, that, that God is leaving you and that you are now alone and have to face things alone. So we thought, well, let's use that as our premise and craft the whole score with voice and what that opened up for us was everything that the human voice is capable of from the sort of uh, primal, guttural grunts and groans and the more animalistic noises that we're all capable of to the divine, to the, to, you know, the most exquisite music that, that human beings can create. So that's, that was, you know, what, it took us a while to get to that idea, but once we landed there, it felt uh, really exciting and I think Stefan managed to create something very unique and very beautiful. And I think when it is voice, an audience kind of ex can experience that in a way, either consciously or subconsciously, that this is being created by people. Um, so perhaps it just creates a deeper connection to the film and what the ideas are. And, um, and I think it's also very exciting as well. So that's, that's where it came from. And I also like to add, we have Emma Bortinian, the sound designer. She's fantastic, one of the top in the country in terms of sound design. And uh, you have amazing, exquisite nature and birds and wildlife. So I hope yesterday you experienced a little bit of Australian bush because it is quite a special sound. So. Hi, sir. Uh, my question is to uh, Mark. Uh, you have been uh, done so many movies and uh, television also. What is the uh, story behind that you turn uh, actor? Uh, sorry, you turn actor into uh, director. Well, yeah, I had. I, that's my background. Uh, is sort of, I come from an acting background, and uh, there's a there's a there's a sort of saying that that acting is is all about. Uh, listening and there's a Seamus Haney poem that says like you've listened long enough now strike your note and I thought I went through something a few years ago where I sort of uh, kind of lost myself a little bit in a, in a battle with my own brain you know there was a sort of uh, a moment of you know me battling mental health and when you're in that place, it's such a uh, it's such a meaningless time in your life. You know, you, you're not really you anymore, and the world as you see it isn't really real anymore. And it's quite scary when you're in that place. And so I thought, well, how can I how can I create something that has meaning, that can talk about what that experience was and turn something that was negative and scary into something perhaps beautiful and hopeful. So that was my reason for wanting to make the film, to, to try to talk about this stuff. Because particularly in Australia, and I don't know whether it's the same in India, I imagine it might be, but it's very hard for men to talk about difficult things and I thought, well, I'll try to and see if that can maybe start a little bit of conversation and then maybe it gets easier for the next person to talk about it and then you can take away some of the stigma around talking about that stuff. So that was my, my real motivation for why I wanted to do it. And I also wanted to boss people around. <laughs> but that's where it came from, yeah. Uh uh, Hugo sir, I have uh, one question for you. Uh, nowadays we are seeing that Indian uh, movies are uh, growing day by day now. Uh, 
as we see uh, last year we got oscar for one uh, rrr movie uh, in indian movie so do you like to work in uh, indian movies i would i would love to work here actually <coughs> there's a filmmaker here who i met again yesterday after about 9 years we met at a film festival in sydney and we were both on the jury of the sydney film festival <coughs> and his name is Anand Gandhi and he lives in Goa and i love his film ship of theseus that you all or some of you may know but it's a beautiful beautiful film and we got to know each other quite well 9 years ago but haven't seen each other since then i would very much love to work with him in this country sometime somewhere so that would be a great honor and pleasure for me Uh, my question is to Mr. Hugh Weaving. Uh, so you started your career in Australia with, uh, I think, Body Line, which was uh, an Australian series. Uh, from then till now, uh, you know, working with Mark as well, uh, you've you've gone to Hollywood, you've come back to Australia, and so to say, how has cinema in Australia changed uh, over all these years for you? And what do you see that has changed, or what is improving, or is better, or is different? from when you first started off your career in television to now uh, in movies what hasn't changed yeah. done in every so so many things have changed really and um i never went to hollywood i mean it's true that um i've worked on a lot of big budget films but interestingly the ones everyone talks about particularly here the matrix was filmed in sydney so hollywood came to me <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> We did we did train um in uh, Los Angeles for the kung fu sequences over some months but we filmed it in Sydney and uh and, and the directors of that film had seen a film I did called Priscilla Queen of the Desert which is an Australian film and they loved it and they loved me in it and could, can you believe that <laughs> after playing a drag queen they decided <laughs> I was perfect casting Agent Smith so uh Anyway, um I think the biggest change that's happened really I I've always wanted to work in Australia, work on Australian films like The Rooster. So something that's born out of the country, that's born out of the people who live in the country and who work in the country. That's my focus and it always has been, which is why I've never gone to Los Angeles, which is why I do not consider myself a Hollywood actor at, at all. I focus on working in Australia whether it's theater or film or television. and um so that's always been my focus and that's a constant for me i do travel i'm very lucky i'm very privileged to be able to work overseas so it's not like i only work in australia but that's my focus the biggest change i think has come in the last over the last 10 years particularly since covid um during that time all the streaming um uh, platforms have established themselves and so the whole infrastructure and the way in which we view films has changed dramatically so i'm sure you feel that in your country like in ours people come to film festivals like this but outside the film festivals people aren't going to the cinema as much anymore i'm not sure it's the same with bollywood films maybe bollywood films is, but it's not maybe it's maybe all cinema is 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 in crisis existential crisis so i think that's where we all are in the world we're viewing we're viewing films on the on the bus on our own on these things and people are making films on these things so 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 the technology has changed the platforms have changed the way in which we view films have changed but people are still making films and people are still still telling stories the technology has changed down and, and the screens have changed but the stories are still there so we're taking them in in different ways and that's great that 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 at least is a constant but aside from that i think things constantly change in life if you're not changing you're dead right <laughs> or you're a stone so so you would hope that things do change but but sometimes the changes are quite momentous and they they make you worried about the future of of democracy of storytelling of inclusivity <laughs> so all of those things are are, are critical and uh But that that makes me want to work more and more on films like the rest to be honest. Uh, my question is to both the producers of the movie 
uh, we saw Max speaking about the uh, scale of the movie on which it was made. We have seen uh, Hugo speaking about the uh, streaming plat platforms which have become dominant. World over, we are seeing the uh, studios dominating the filmmaking. How difficult do you think it is for small filmmakers to find finances? What was your uh, opinion? Uh, what, what was your experience about that? Because the other day we had the documentary filmmakers uh, similarly uh, raising their uh, problems about finding it difficult to raise the finances. Is it time to now think about different business model for filmmaking? I mean, yeah, yes. We're, I think uh, we. We knew that it would be difficult, probably, to raise finances for this film because it's a drama, because it's a first-time filmmaker. Um, we had Hugo, which was a big plus, which did help to a certain extent. But I don't know if it's the same here, but in Australia, drama is very hard to sell. Uh, <coughs> unless it's gone to Cannes, and, and even then, you know, I think it's hard. So um, we knew that it would be difficult, so we purposefully kept the scale of it as small as we could, whilst also trying to make sure we had enough to create something that could um, be uh, seen worldwide and hopefully be competitive worldwide. Um, so it was finding that balance of trying to get as much money on screen as possible and make it look and feel and sound as beautiful locations that we knew we could access for free. Um, and that was a very specific uh, decision that we made. Um, I know Marvine's thought a lot about different business models for films, particularly independent films in Australia, so maybe she can talk to that. Um, I think of great funding bodies, when Australia supported the film. Uh, what I think when it comes to independent films, especially personal films, you find allies. So it's not so much so you have especially this one, it's very personal to Mark, and it's a drama, as Jerry mentioned. So you go to people who want to support. So you look at trying to see what you can present to the people who you want to, who you want to finance your film. Are they interested in um, talent escalation, right? Driving the industry in a way, seeing the new talent like Mark rise up. Uh, are they interested in a topic? So I think you've got to really think, what is your film trying to do? But I also think uh, on a panel in Cannes, someone was mentioning, because this, it's just not happening. The market is just not quite know where it's going. And someone was mentioning that he wonders if the films need to go back to where it was. You remember the rise of the independent film, where Sundance, you know, and then you just go back to basic, you know, and start and see how you can achieve a beautiful independent film, which always starts with a great story. And as Jerry sort of more cleverly put it, you know, see, okay, I can really contain this in this location, and, you know, just try and find what it is in your story that you can leverage, and, yeah. Good luck. Financing films are always really hard, but yeah, you, I'm sure you'll be fine. Anyone have any other question? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's nice to see your film in the IFI International Film Festival in India. Uh, to the director, are you any plans to have a produce a film from Indian co-production? Look, I, I, I don't really, off the top of my head, I'm sort of working on various things, but um, that, that weren't sort of, you know, uh, directly involved with India. But um, just sort of being around the film bazaar, uh, you know, the, the, the last few days, and I met a lot of um, filmmakers there, Indian filmmakers, who were sort of doing similar things to me and working in a similar space to me. And, you know, doing some interesting, really independent stuff. So, you know, you can't help, and th they were just extraordinarily creative and interesting. So, you can't help but start thinking like, oh, maybe, oh, what could we do? And now that we've established those connections, um, perhaps, you know, somewhere we could start collaborating on something. So, uh, certainly the, the seeds have been planted for that. No, the government of India has come up with new film policies for international filmmakers mm. for the shooting, post-production. 
mm. and release of the present. Mm. So we should have a look of into that idea. Definitely, and anything to you know to. And as a director from foreign land, how you rate the Indian films? You know. Well, I, I mean, I, I I haven't experienced too much, but I guess my experience is is mostly sort of the bigger Bollywood ones that I kind of take over the world a little bit but um, but as I was saying sort of just experiencing um, you know what some of these uh, local guys are doing on that independent level too was really uh, fascinating for me so. uh, no uh, the scenarios in India has changed no more Bollywood we have pan India movies very co very commercial viable films yeah it will bring very huge business uh, yeah. uh, I would request you to watch that type of movies pan India movies you know the Bollywood is old, old formula. Old formula. Old formula, right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. We have pan India movies, actors across the country working in multiple languages. Yeah. And releasing the worldwide films. Yeah. Now uh, Indian films are released worldwide. Yes, not absolutely. Not only India. And I think, uh, I think that something that is quite difficult for Australians to kind of wrap their heads around a little bit is just the scale. Of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Of it's very huge scale. Huge scale, scale, so much different language, so much different regions uh, that are all creating sort of unique stories to them. So Yeah, recently we had a Kalki, Triple R, which had yeah, a huge yeah. business, huge yeah. business yeah. of Bangladesh. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. And so because of the time constraint, yeah, you want to I just to wanted to jump in and say, as much as I love Delsa and Kushka Shodai, yeah. India <laughs> had an excellent year. You got it in Cannes and you had Girls Will Be Girls and Nocturne mm -hmm. so you're dominating so that's why we're here to just head on so we won't go anywhere. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay so because of the time we are ending this so I just want to congratulate the entire team.